In this video, I'm gonna talk about this new RPG resin from Frozen. They've got two new colors, the smoke and the beige. We're also gonna talk about how to calibrate this resin before you go and print your minis. If you don't know, the RPG resin stands for role-playing game, specifically designed for printing minis so that they don't break when you're using them or if you accidentally drop them. All right, with that, let's get going. And real quick before I forget, I want you to notice this little endorsed by Lychee logo on all three of these bottles. This is because Lychee Slicer, we use this resin quite a bit and we love it. We love it enough to fully endorse it. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel now and like this video, I'll show you something really cool in the near future. Oof. Oof. More to come on this. When you get your resin in the mail, the first thing you need to do is shake it. Generally shake it like it owes you money, but that's kind of annoying. So let's try a little something. I'm calling this the frozen shake and bake because it will shake and bake your resin, make you a nice little frozen pie. Probably won't do the last thing. I've actually never used this thing before, so let's get it going real quick. Uh, I think I just hit quick shake. That's gonna take 15 minutes to heat and shake this, so I'm not gonna sit here and make you watch this thing. Now, if you've got a printer with a built-in heater, you might think that that seems a little bit silly, but let me tell you a few reasons why this could help. One of them is if you've got a print that's running and you wanna add resin to it because you're running low, putting in resin that's pre-warmed is gonna keep the temperature high or at least keep a consistent temperature so you don't drop it when you're adding in resin and possibly cause a failure or a big layer shift. The next thing is if you're trying to start a print with cold resin, it's not gonna adhere as well to the build plate. The reason being is that cold resin doesn't cure as fast it also becomes less viscous. The warmer the resin is, the less viscous it is. And it's gonna be able to squish better on those bottom layers, get a layer, a thinner layer, and get better bonding to the build plate. So there's a couple of reasons on why that little built-in heater can help you in those two situations. The shaking thing, um, I guess it just saves us from doing this, which is kind of nice. So there you go. Now after your resin's all nice and shaken up, whether you did it by hand or you got a little handy dandy resin shake and bake machine yourself, the next thing you gotta do is pour it into the printer. And of course for that one, you wanna make sure you're wearing gloves. I normally have a mask on, but if you can't really hear me, I can't record. And you wanna be in a well-ventilated area. I'm in a recording studio. I don't have good ventilation here, so I'll just kinda have to deal with it. Luckily, I don't do this very often. Where I normally 3D print, I've got uh, ventilation that runs 24 seven. So all right, let's add some resin to the printer. And now I've already added this printer to Lychee. And because this printer has Wi-Fi capabilities, I can slice and send it directly to the printer without using a USB key. So the next thing I need to do is add the resin profile to the printer. To do that, there's a couple ways. One thing with the printer selected, you can just click on add new resin at the bottom of this green button right here. You can go through the process to add it that way. The way I like to do it is if there's an existing resin there, I'll just click on edit. And the very top, there's this little copy symbol right here and I'll hit copy. I'm gonna select the printer to add the resin to. I'm gonna make sure it's on the Revo. That's the one I'm gonna use. Hit copy. And right here, I'm just gonna change the name. So this one says it's the, the frozen RPG gray. And then I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna add a new color. And this one's gonna be the beige. Beige. Now I'm gonna keep that as boxes because I'm gonna calibrate this using boxes of calibration. So let's go through the settings really, really quick on just how I set this up for the first time when I'm using a new resin. The first thing I like to do is I like to increase the exposure time on the burn-in layers to 30 or more seconds. I'm actually gonna go to 33 seconds on this one. This is because for the first time, I just wanna make sure everything sticks. I can dial it back down later, but right now I don't really know the resin very well. So I'm, I'm just gonna kinda overdo it. For the lift distance, we're gonna do four millimeters plus four, total of eight. We're gonna start going at 40, speed up to 100. On the way back down, we're gonna start at 100, going down and then slow down to 40 for the last two millimeters. The weight before print. Now, the weight before print, there's something interesting about this. This is a frozen printer, which means when I slice for it, I can use a format called .ctb or .prz. If I use .crtb, which is the ChuChu box or ChuChu system's own file format, these weight before print mean nothing. It won't use these ones under the burn-in layers. It will only use the ones under the normal layers. But I'm gonna slice this using .prz, which is Frozen's format, and that one, the wait times actually do apply. With one exception, layer one, no wait times apply, and that's because it's still a Chichu Systems motherboard in there, and for some reason they designed it in a way where the wait times are applied after the layer is done, not before. So layer one never gets wait times at all. 
just kind of a weird quirk of the system. Anyway, moving to the normal layers, I'm gonna do this at 30 microns. If you want to print faster, you do 50. I like things in higher detail, so I'm gonna do 30, but it's gonna take a lot longer. Exposure time, I'm gonna ramp this up again. We're gonna do three seconds. Again, I'm not familiar with this resin, so I'm just gonna bump it up. And then probably what's gonna happen, it's gonna be overexposed. And then I'll bump it back down maybe to two seconds, which I would hope would, would, would be underexposed. But that will kind of give me a baseline to see where I'm closer on the exposure setting. So on the third print, I can probably dial it in really, really fast and really close. I'd say pretty often I actually get it on the third print. Sometimes I need a fourth, but that's my method of doing it. Overexpose, underexpose, and then generally try to dial it in on the third print. All right, on this one, we're gonna do a little bit less movement, three millimeters, three millimeters, total of six. The weight before print, we're gonna do 2.5 seconds because I don't know this resin. It does seem a little bit thick, so I like to have uh, two seconds would be for like a really, really thin resin, and I'll go up from there. This isn't like the thickest resin I've ever used, but it's a little bit viscous, so we'll do 2.5 seconds. Weight after print, 0 0.05, uh, that's fine. And weight after lift, I don't even know what that does other than waste your time, so I'm just going to leave that at zero. Okay, so that's good, so we're going to hit OK, and that's going to save those settings. So the next thing we do is grab the calibration print. So we'll close out of this. We're going to head over to the LiG library, and we're going to search for boxes. We're gonna find it right there, boxes of calibration, and we're gonna import the default model. We're also going to include a link in the description below in case you don't have access to this. So you can still get the file and follow along even if you're using something else. Now this is very important. After we've loaded the calibration part into the scene, we wanna make sure we move it around a little bit every single print. You never wanna print on the exact same spot twice. That will damage your release film. It could cause it to tear if you do it too often and destroy your printer. So to make everything last longer, just move it around every single time. You can also rotate it by 90 or 180 degrees. An easy way to do that is if you hold shift down on your keyboard and grab the yellow line right here, it will rotate in increments of five degrees, allowing you to get the perfect 90 or 180. All right, and now we're gonna click on the export button. We're gonna head over to this drop down here to send wirelessly to the Revo. So from here, we're gonna click on send and print. Now you only have this option if you have your uh, printer wirelessly connected to Lychee Slicer. If not, you'll just slice it normally on the hard drive, then copy it to USB. Definitely do it in that order. Don't slice direct directly to the USB. That can cause all sorts of data corruption issues. And you can see right here, it says .prz. We're gonna slice this using the .prz format. So I'm gonna hit OK. It's going to render this. It's gonna do 330 layers. Again, if you're printing at 50 UM, it would be less layers and render faster. It's finished slicing. Now it's uploading it to the printer. So we should see it pop up here in just a second. There we go. This printer's checking the file integrity. It checked it, it passed, and now it's gonna start printing. So from here, I'm just gonna close the hood to kind of keep some of the vents out of this room, and then we'll just kind of let it do its thing. All right, and through the magic of editing, I've printed the boxes of calibration for the smoke and the beige resin. I'm not gonna do the gray for this video. It's resin's been out for a while and I've already calibrated it, so we'll just set that aside for now. These boxes, they're supposed to stack inside of each other, don't. Uh, I got a little kind of leaning power of Tisa thing, leaning tower of boxes over there. I got all the pillars to print, all 10, but that's kind of irrelevant because they're definitely too big. I can't get them into each other. Same thing over here on the smoke resin. There's no way I can get these things inside of each other. I could push all day long, but they're definitely too big, telling me this resin is definitely overexposed. I did that intentionally just to see, well, one, I guess, that three seconds was going to be too long. It is, and uh, also just to see how much overexposed they are. If you have a pair of digital calipers, you can measure them and you can get a more exact measurement. Each one of these was uh, a little bit over 0.1 millimeters overexposed, which in the aspects of resin 3D printing is quite a bit. So now what we're gonna do is reduce the exposure time down by a second for each one and run it again. All right, and here we go again. Now they've been reduced down to two seconds instead of three. Now these aren't gonna end up being exactly the same because they are two different resins. If you don't know, white resins generally uh, bleed easier, so they need less exposure time or they're a little bit harder to dial in than a dark colored resin. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna snap these off right here and just kind of see if they fit. If you don't know how to do it on these ones, you just peel this backwards, kind of towards the back end and they'll snap right off. From there, we just want to go through and slide them in and see how well they go in. For this one, it still actually seems like we're a bit overexposed, so maybe two seconds is still a bit too much. A little bit hard to get in there. Let's try again. Yep, definitely not really fitting. It goes in easier. I kind of have to force it in a little bit, but it's not 
See, that's that one's hard to get in there. Yeah, definitely too much. You can force it in there, but it's not what I want to do. So let's try the smoke one. Now, one thing I noticed in the smoke is I only have eight out of 10 pillars. So it might be getting to the point where we're underexposed on this one. Let's go through and try this again. That kind of just fell right in there. So let's do it one more time. And definitely it's just fell right in there. And if I kind of wiggle it, like it feels like a loose tooth. But anyway, definitely, yeah, a lot of wiggle room in there. So that's not what we're looking for either. Let's print this again. This one needs a little bit less. This one needs a little bit more. Let's go through and subtract and add and print them again. And here's the third time I've printed them. Let's snap them off and try it again. Start with the beige again. We'll see if we get a good fit. Ooh, that's, that's a good fit. No wiggle, smooth. Let's try it again. No wiggle, smooth, and I've got 10 out of 10 pillars. So no wiggle room at all, a smooth, nice, very little force required to put it in there. If you got force, let's say like turning off a light switch, that's fine, and that's about what that was. Now let's go for the smoke. We're gonna snap it off, and let's try it again. Ooh, that was nice, hear that little click? Yep, yeah, that was, yep, nice. A uh, little bit less force than a light switch on that one, but also I have 10 out of 10 pillars. So at this point, I would say, I'm done. These are calibrated. I can get a pair of digital calipers to measure them if I want to make sure. But at this point, we're far, far, far beyond what is observable by using your eyes. And we're only to a point where it can only be measured whether or not we're, we need to dial it in, you know, if you're crazy, that exposure by another 0.1 seconds or not. And if we wanted to get crazy and just confirm, here's a pair of digital calipers. You just measure the boxes. The biggest one should measure at exactly um, eight millimeters if it's like perfect, perfect. This one I'm getting um, 7.96, which is off by 0.04 millimeters. If I wanted to, I could add 0.1 second or you know, if I really wanted to, to get that a little bit more. I don't really think it's necessary. The six millimeters is only off by 0 0.02 millimeters, and the top one is also only off by 0 0.02 millimeters. So at the most, we're off by 0 0.04 millimeters, which is far uh, beyond anything that's visible at that point. So this one is off by 0 0.01 millimeters, 0 0.02, and 0 0.01 across the board, and perfect. So this one's off by 0 0.02 millimeters at the most, this one off by 0 0.04 millimeters at the most. I could print it again, you know, uh, give or take by 0.1 second or 0 0.015 seconds. But honestly, I think at this point, we're done. Off to print some actual minis. And now I need some models to print. So to do that, I'm gonna head back on over to the Lychee Library and I'm gonna grab some miniatures from Miniatures of Madness. And there's another artist who just showed up in the Lychee Library and that's Midas Forge. I really liked some of these miniatures, so I'm gonna throw them on the build plate as well. All right, and through the magic of editing, I now have a bunch of minis in the smoke and the beige. Now I'll throw some pictures up as well as some B-roll of kind of removing this off the build plate and cleaning them a little bit. But what I can tell just by looking at them with the naked eye, is that the quality is really good for flexible resin. I would say it's on par with the uh, regular like Aqua 8K, especially when I can kind of compare this one to the regular red clay. It looks really good. I mean, I would say that the details of the models are all being printed, especially this guy with the little suction cups. It's very impressive how each little suction cup is um, fully formed. I can see kind of like inside of them. It's got a lot of detail in the hat, which I can clearly see with the naked eye. The supports were really, really easy to remove. It was really easy to print, really easy to calibrate. So now the big test is how does it bend? Let's try his sword right there. The sword's actually bending pretty good. It's a little bit thicker. I'm getting a decent amount of bend. If I drop it, it just bounces and doesn't break. I think more, that's probably more what it's designed for, not trying to like fold it in half, but you know, will it break when it bounces? No, it survives that impact just fine. So I wonder what happens if we try to play like dice with all these miniatures. Is anyone gonna break? No breaks, let's see. Little dice, little mini dice. All right, let's try the beige. We're rolling some beige minis and no breaks. Now, is it gonna fold in half before it breaks? No, but it's also pretty dang accurate. So for flexible resins, it's always that trade-off between accuracy and flexibility. And I would say the RPG does a good job at finding a good balance where, as you saw, the models will kind of bounce off the table and not break, but I'm still getting that beautiful accuracy. So when you look at it, it looks like it's printed from 
the 8K uh, Aqua 8K resins, which are very, very accurate and very, very beautiful. And if you could, please like and subscribe to our Lychee Slicer YouTube channel. Reach out to us on the comments below or our Discord group if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future videos. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.